Hello and what is up YouTube? My name is G3Iron and we are here with uh, a development manifesto on Path of Exile 3.5. We are 3 days, 15 hours, 16 minutes and 0 seconds away from Path of Exile Betrayal 3.5 being released. Just a couple of days away. We're less than 24 hours, right around 24 hours away from patch notes coming out. So lots of exciting things happening this week as we all gear up for Betrayal and all of us try to get are outside of Path of Exile responsibilities as uh, in order as we possibly can. And today, uh, there's a lot of discussion because of this development manifesto. I've taken, I've tried to take a few hours here while putting the kids to bed uh, to read over it and to read some of the reactions that's going out. So uh, without further ado, what we're going to do in this video is we're going to dive into exactly you know, going through the balance changes announced uh, themselves in this development manifesto. And then um, we're going to chat about it a little bit. And then over the next 24 hours, we're probably going to come out with some more discussion, um, especially as patch notes uh, come out, uh, you know, tomorrow within the next 24 hours or so. So there's lots to go over here. Um, yeah. I, I, I there's just a lot to go over so let's just jump right in okay balance changes in path of exile betrayal every release we choose some specific game balance issues and gameplay limitations to address and adjust the patch notes tomorrow will provide the comprehensive list of changes but today we'd like to cover some specific changes and the reasons for them stat sticks so this is the very first thing the very first thing in the development manifesto is stat sticks which for a uh a decent period of time, probably for the last six to ten months, people have been complaining about stat sticks in one way or another. And so now stat sticks are getting addressed. So let's take a look. The use of stat sticks has been a feature of Path of Exile for a very long time. A stat stick is an offhand weapon that is not valid to use with a skill you are using when dual wielding. You get all the benefits of the stats on the weapon while not having any limitations it might have affecting the use of the skill. You can use a weapon that has an, a, the attack speed and or damage you want for the skill while the offhand provides excellent stats without its speed or base damage limiting you. We actually did a whole video on stat sticks and how to use them and what they're good for. Well, say goodbye to stat sticks as we know them. This use started off as an interesting gameplay element to use as part of the build, but over many releases as more powerful modifiers on uniques and rare weapons have been added, the power of stat sticks cannot be ignored when planning builds and is stifling other choices including genuine dual wielding. In 3.5, we are removing the ability to use stat sticks through the following changes. <clears throat> you will no longer be able to use skills that require a specific weapon equipped if you are dual wielding and one of your equipped weapons is unsuitable for that skill. <clears throat> I just want to go over that really briefly, really quickly again. You don't get to use skills that require a specific weapon equipped if you're dual wielding and one of your equipped weapons is unsuitable for that skill. So let's say, for instance, you are using a uh, mace and an axe, okay, and your stat stick was w either a mace or an axe, and you're using a skill that requires either a mace or an axe. If you were planning on using either your mace or the axe as your stat stick for that skill because it wouldn't trigger for that skill because it required the opposite, so let's say if you're using a mace in one hand and an axe in the other and it requires a mace, it used to be that the axe would be your stat stick. However, if the gem requires you to use a mace now, you have to be using two maces in order for the gem to be usable. Now, I could be wrong on this, but that's how that reads. So just, just be aware of that. Skills that could be used with two weapons, but were main hand only when used, now use both weapons when dual wielding. So, for instance, it used to be that you could have a, 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 a gem that would say, hey, you need to use axes for this. And you go, okay, well, um, I'm going to use two axes, but this primary axe, my main hand, is going to be really, really high physical DPS. And my offhand is just going to give me some really good global stats that I need. Well, your DPS used to be calculated off of that main hand. Okay, so you really only needed one really awesome weapon. This was how I played um, 
in particular, just personally, this was how I played all the way through Delve on all of my Consecrated Path stuff, uh, leveling everything in Hardcore as well as in Softcore using pretty much Consecrated Path. <laughs> all you had to do was simply sort through the trade listing and look for the highest physical DPS thing at your uh, we one-handed weapon at your particular level, and boom, away you went. You didn't have to worry about your offhand because the weapon didn't attack with your offhand. So you could get a stat stick as soon as you could, whether that be a unique stat stick that would give you a lot of offhanded um, wonderful stats or a shape stat stick uh, later on in the game as you were mapping. Well, that's, that's now dead because if you're genuinely using... Uh, dual wielding, your DPS is now going to be calculated off of your main hand as well as your off hand. So that's how they're nerfing stat sticks. There's a lot of discussion going on right now about this. A lot of it, I'm going to say, is reactionary. Okay, A lot of it is people just tunnel visioning in the moment. So if you're checking the forums today, if you're watching YouTube, if you are uh, checking Reddit, just realize patch notes come out tomorrow. Again, I think I've said that like four times already in this short video. Patch notes come out tomorrow. So we don't necessarily know specifics of how this is going to change the meta, how this is going to change various characters that used to use stat sticks. We don't know. And plenty of builds out there exist that allow you to A, level very, very quickly and very, very um, smoothly, as well as take down end game content and progress through the maps uh, system on the Atlas very, very smoothly and very, very quickly. So it's not like the entire game revolved around stat sticks uh, in terms of what was viable, but stat sticks certainly were top tier optimization for attack based build that could be dual wielding um, up until this point. So that's the change. So just take, take that little caveat. Patch notes come out tomorrow. A lot of reaction right now is reactionary, and let's all just take a deep breath and see what this wonderful, beautiful game that we all love, Path of Exile, does next, because the age of stat sticks is over. A lot of people reacted this way. For those of you who are new, maybe you're coming over because, you know, maybe you don't have phones, <laughs> so maybe that's why you're coming over to Path of Exile, or maybe you're just genuinely new over the last year. A lot of people freaked out when Grinding Gear Games... Um, smashed Volpact. There was about two years where Volpact was just like instant meta. Everybody used it all the time um, because it was the go-to instant leech ability. At, at one point, it used to be that Volpact just straight up gave you instant leech. So you had no life uh, regen, but you got instant leech. So if you just did tons and tons of damage and leeched off of it, then boom, you just leeched it all back up. And it was, it was insane. It was, yeah. It was really, really strong. Um, for those of you that uh, want to look back even further, uh, GGG nerfed um, Area of Effect, which a lot of people have critiqued over the years. But uh, for a while there, it, it, it was just insane, the amount of uh, screen clearing abilities that there were in the game. And so AoE got nerfed. And so sometimes people will reference Volpact and AoE nerfs as uh, just as a way of reminder that whenever the nerf bat comes out and it seems like it's heavy handed, it's actually not heavy handed. It's not a change in direction for GGG. It's not as though this is some new way of thinking. This is the way that Grinding Gear Games uh, nerfs things. They go at it hard uh, when they choose to nerf things. So if this looks like this is heavy handed <laughs> for, for dual wielding stat sticks, it's because it is. Um, and that's not outside of the norm. So let's continue. We found that with this change, it was important to make skill binds specific to your weapon set. You can now have an entirely different skill set bound to your main set of weapons and your second set of weapons. Okay, so for those of you that have no idea any of the words that I just said, a lot of us that play various types of characters have lots and lots of different skills that we need to use, whether those are Vol skills back in the day before Vol skills were integrated with our regular gem, um, but also and especially summoners and support characters. So a lot of summoners and support characters are gem starved. That's a term that gets used to gem starved. In other words, you're, you're socket starved. You don't necessarily have a bunch of sockets um, to fill all of the different things that would make your build really fun and high quality of life. And beyond that, we're even further limited not just by gems and by sockets, but then also by the UI inside the game of the number of different um, spots to actually have activatable skills. And what we have now is we now have 
just like your weapon swapping with uh, shorthand X as default on PC, when you hit X, you swap weapons. Well, now we're going to have a whole skill set and a skill bar that is going to come up. So a lot of people have been wondering, are we ever going to get a second skill bar or is that skill bar ever going to uh, change in any way? Well, this is the first implementation of a change to the skill bar, which up until now, GGG has been rock solid cement staunch we're never changing it we're not adding it the number of keys that you have available is the number of keys that we're going to stick with with the game uh, and so this on the one hand seems like a really good compromise we're not getting extra keys so we're not becoming an mmorpg with you know 20 different skills along the bottom of your monitor that you need to track but um, what we are getting is for those builds that require a lot of different gems and a lot of different activatable skills is you can weapon swap um, and have a whole second set of abilities that are already set up for you. So I imagine this is going to be a huge quality of life for summoners and for aura bots um, because if you're if you're if you're keeping a bunch of different auras in a weapon slot, you can just weapon slot weapon slot weapon slot swap. <laughs> you can weapon swap from uh, from your primaries to your secondaries or from your secondaries into your primaries and then uh, toggle all of the toggleable things that you need to toggle. So that's pretty exciting. That's a pretty huge quality of life buff. Energy Shield Recharge. Energy Shield Recharge is no longer interrupted by non-damage changes to your life or Energy Shield. For context, we announced last week that Eldritch Battery will now cause you to have 50% less Energy Shield Recharge rate. Initially, this, this change was explored as a way to make it easier for casters to use Eldritch Battery to solve mana issues. One major issue standing in the way to Eldritch Battery being effective is that it doesn't work very well on its own needing something like Zealot's Oath to go along with it. While there were concerns that this might introduce issues with other builds, when tested, it was just a justified change and was beneficial for a variety of cases. As a further support for Eldritch Battery and Energy Shield-based builds in general, more flat Energy Shield has been added to the tree. Okay, so for the last year or so, calendar year at least, 2018, um, basically, B-Siri, Incursion, and now, of course, Delve. Energy Shield builds are still incredibly strong, but they are not as strong as they used to be um, just because of the amount of nerfs that came out uh, to stats, to flat stats that were on rares that were available as well as uniques. There was just this massive change across the board to the way how Energy Shield worked. And it was because Energy Shield, in combination with Volpact for a long time, was ridiculous um, with the way how things worked for uh, life gain for life leech. So it was ridiculous and it needed to be changed. And so now it looks like there's a little bit more energy shield creeping back in because there are so many different very, very strong life-based builds uh, that maybe we're seeing a little bit of a time of a rotation. That is a word that you are going to hear a few more times in these patch notes. Um, as I describe them, of rotation. We are starting to see that um, GGG is, is, is rotating the meta and so if for six months to a year we've experienced one meta, there is now a shift and we're going to start experiencing that meta differently. Um, and so play styles will change a little bit differently as well. So there's the beginning of a rotation. You often see this in card games as well as MOBAs where you have this kind of ping pong triangle, rock, paper, scissors thing going on where one thing is really, really strong and then the thing that counters that thing then becomes really, really strong and then the thing that counters the thing that counters the thing becomes really, really strong and then the first thing that was getting countered is no longer meta because there's so many counters to it. Anyway, that's kind of what we're starting to see uh, with the design of uh, Path of Exile is that different things are rotating and taking turns to be the OP thing. Life has been the OP thing for a while and it looks like Energy Shield is on the rise on the way back up. So if you're buying stock, buy stock in Energy Shield as it were. All right, cap on slowing effects. The total amount that you can slow the expiration of an effect on a character through a time slowing mechanism such as temporal change is now capped at 75% from all sources. Time slowing effects are very powerful defensive tools. Limiting time slowing to a cap allows us flexibility in making content as well as allowing us as well allowing us as well allowing us to provide more options for giving players time slowing effects okay so i place the blame on this change squarely on delve so the reason why this is getting changed is because when delve was first created they originally designed delve for its deepest depths to be 1500 they didn't think that players would be able to really reach depth 1500 chris then went into the dev team doubled that put it at 3000 and of course within the first month empyrean and his team broke past the 3000 mark 
So now that Delve has wrapped up, I believe a couple of people, or maybe only just one, but I, I know at least one person uh, in Softcore hit 6,000 depth. So a lot of that is due to the defensive mechanisms um, that temporal chains as well as other slowing effects has provided. So one of the things that they're trying to do in order to um, allow, as Beck says, more flexibility in creating stuff is to cap slowing effects regardless of the difficulty you know, of, of the stage. You just get capped at 75%, just like resistances get capped at 75%. Just cap slowing effects at 75% so that way regardless of whatever else goes on they can at least design around that and say hey this is this is the exact this is the furthest the players can go in terms of slowing down the enemies that they're going to face so i squarely place uh this development change uh, on on delve and on player creativity um so really you know hats off um to the player base here with uh, uh, with the Delve League for really being able to min max and just push builds and push the dev team um, to to come out with something heavy handed like this and yes this is pretty heavy handed um, at this stage in the in the life of Path of Exile to say hey you guys have broken a defensive mechanic on the way how monsters function and we need to just set a cap on this because otherwise you you as a player base are actually limiting limiting the creative things that we can do as designers because you're just breaking everything that we come out with by slowing things so. On the one hand, you might look at it and go, wow, that's really broken and OP, that's dumb. Um, sure, but it's also really cool that people figured out a way to do that. So hats off to players and uh, and as well, hats off to GGG for recognizing that that's a problem and that's something that's hamstringing their development of the game and they want to give us awesome, cool content. So they're going to cap it so that way they can do that. Okay, this is the other thing that we're going to talk about, rotations. I said that we're going to talk about that word a little bit in this video, rotations. This unique rebalance, let's talk about this. The patch notes tomorrow will cover a large number of unique item rebalances. Some of these are simple numerical changes, while others are closer to redesigns. Okay, that sentence in and of itself, it, it it's what used to be an entire league. Like, balance changes, numerical changes, and then redesigns. That used to be, when I started playing Path of Exile in earnest, that used to be what whole patches were um, and whole leagues were, were redesigns of things that were already there, fixing things and, and tweaking numbers on stuff. Um, so for those of you that are new to PoE, for those of us that have played PoE longer than you, so longer than the last two years, or even players who have played longer than I have played, will look at this and go, wow, this is really incredible um, how far the game has come. The Betrayal adds so much new content, and then they're they're doing all of this on top of that where they're going to go back and, and rebalance a bunch of u new uniques. Now, we don't know how many uniques it is. We don't know what uniques it is. Again, give us 24 hours. We're going to find out once patch notes drop. But here are the following principles that were applied when looking at rebalancing unique items. Any item that drops very rarely should be justified in being that hard to find. Many very rare items have been improved while a few were made more common. The first meme that I just have to like wipe away your tears on, I don't think they're going to make Headhunter more common. Just FYI. I think that's a chase item. I think it should be a chase item. I don't think that's getting tweaked. So any of you out there that were going, oh, maybe... <laughs> Maybe this is the league that Headhunter gets nerfed and then becomes all of a sudden really prevalent. No, it's still going to be something that you have to chase and farm for days for. Okay, secondly, unique items that are acquired through specific high tier bosses, for example, Elder and Shaper Guardians, should be balanced upwards where they are not up to par. This is really cool because when you kill Elder and Shaper um, uh, and, and Shaper Guardians, like it should feel good, right? It should feel good when you're taking out Guardians. Like, it's not just that you are doing a chore to take out Guardians <clears throat> to then be able to get to the real loot. Like, killing these high-tier bosses in and of themselves should feel pretty good. So that's cool that they're going to be scaled up. That's a good thing. So for those of you that like to farm those endgame bosses, this is good news. Unique items that dramatically affected diversity in an item slot would be addressed, either by nerfing excessive power or by looking at what else was available in that item slot. Okay, so... Impulses, I'm looking at you. I've thought now, and you can go back and watch our the videos that I've done in countdown for countdowns for leagues past. I I've, I've thought for two leagues, impulses was going to get nerfed, and it didn't. It didn't get nerfed in bestiary, and then it did not get nerfed with incursion when triple herald elementalist 
was like 21% of the league or something. It was ridiculous. And impulses didn't get touched. <laughs> Triple Herald Elementalist didn't get touched. Like, there was one point where I logged on, and seriously, everybody in the guild, like, there were 15 different players that were all playing Triple Herald Elementalist. And it was crazy because all of them were slightly different levels, and so they were all, like, giving stuff to one another. I'm looking at you, impulses, okay? You're probably going to get tweaked. You deserve to be in get tweaked. You're going to be the first thing that I search for in the patch notes tomorrow when they come out. Is impulses getting touched, and how is it getting touched? Uh, because it's been, it has been what exactly this sentence has said: a unique item that drastically affects diversity in that item slot. Like if you are running any kind of herald, if if you're playing elementalist of any type, why the hell wouldn't you be using impulses? Like, why wouldn't you? Why would you use something different? Um, the argument that there are other better chess pieces is so niche and situational that a, a change to impulses probably wouldn't affect it, positively or negatively. Like, it, it's just clearly a better item in that slot um, for anybody that's running anything that can have a shocking exploding effect. It's just better than everything else. There's, it, it, yeah. Yeah. That's all there is to say. So I'm looking at you, Impulses. A couple of other things out there to be on the watch for. Um, I think maybe, maybe this is kind of like my offshoot. This is really stepping out on a on a limb. I think maybe Windripper might actually see some changes just because of Magic Find, the weapon slot. Um, that, that that just is best in slot for, for Magic Find builds. So um, if you're playing a, a Magic Find build and you're not using Windripper, you're probably getting laughed at. Of course, you can be a Wanderer if you want, but that that's just... That's just kind of where that whole archetype is at, Magic Find as well. So those would be the two items that I'm going to look for tomorrow uh, as being uh, unique items that dramatically affected <coughs> diversity in a particular item slot. Then fourthly, items which were relatively very strong but did not damage diversity could be made more rare. Okay, So stuff that um, isn't necessarily as prevalent in taking up slots but uh, is very, very strong. Um, and it's going to be judged as being strong, could get, could get nerfed in its availability. I don't think this is going to be Indigens. Some people have been saying if this is going to be Indigens. I think Indigens is just going to straight up get a nerf, uh, if not Xerfies, is just straight up going to get a nerf. And the Markov uh, patch notes uh, that, the, the, that GGG releases where they put the patch notes through a robot, um, Zerfi was a word that was included in there, so Zerfies is probably getting touched. But uh, I don't just think it's going to be because of its rarity. Zerfi was already pretty rare, and Indigen was a was a was an end game boss drop. So I don't think it's just going to be made more rare. I think those are probably going to be things like impulses that just fundamentally get changed. While many unique items were adjusted, this is an ongoing process, and some items that may have deserved a change by the above principles might yet might not yet be addressed. Go ahead and walk by. Okay, cast on. When looking at unique item balance, some items that offered triggered effects had their cooldowns reduced. It was difficult to do this without also looking at other triggered effects. As a result, the cast on critical strike support and cast on melee kill support will both have their cooldowns reduced. We already knew about the COC for cast on crit, uh, but now we hear that cast on melee kill will also have its cooldown um, reduced. One cool thing that I don't remember who said it, uh, it was on a stream, uh, it was just somebody in the stream chat that had suggested that um, not only does cast on melee kill support need to have its cooldowns nerfed, but they all, what they really need to do is they need to make it so that way, like if you're just hitting a unique boss or a rare boss um, or monster, that um, your cooldowns get refreshed. So that would be really, really strong for cast on melee kill support. I'm not sure if thematically that really works with cast on melee kill support, but it was it was a cool idea. But to me, that's more of a COC thing. Like if <clears throat> if I can just cast everything just by hitting rare packs, um, and I don't actually have to kill anything, then that's really a whole different gem, right? Like cast on melee kill support. Again, it may be niche. It may not ever be flavor of the month. It may not ever be the best. But like as a design. It's cast on kill. <laughs> it's not just cast on hit. So that's one cool idea that I'd seen thrown around, but I don't think that's happening. Okay, so archetypes. One of the approaches we use in patches in developing skills and making changes around them, some specific play styles. 
This is centered around the concept of having some build archetypes. We make a specific build and add features and balance changes around that build. While some players are expected to end up in the archetype, we also want the tools to be useful in existing builds and to allow and change other builds that share elements with it. The three archetypes for 3.5 were a cold-based dot spellcaster, a hero font-based caster based on a new skill type, brands, and the champion-based melee character based on new axe and sword steel skills with a new effect impale supported by a new skill type banners okay so before we go any further remember how we were talking about rotations how games have rotations this is not an uncommon thing in game design a lot of people um saw path of exile when they first came to path of exile as a kind of um, free-for-all open world experience in the meta and crafting side of things not open world as in uh, gameplay but open world or open-ended uh, options as an action RPG. Whereas other games in the genre force you to pick a class and then base your, your skills off of that class or base your abilities off of that class or base your stats off of that class. What POE originally offered was a massive complex passive tree that you could then take anybody, um, any class, and do anything with because the way how skills worked, you simply had to have the stats that you chose as you filled out the passive tree. Um, you just needed those stats in order to meet the requirements for the items and for the, the gems that you were using. So this right here, as people want to look at this and say, oh, this is this is GGG kind of um, getting more casual or getting more boxed in in their game design or revealing that they are a little bit more um, narrow-minded or more focused on rotating a meta because they're enforcing certain build types. Um, on the one hand, I just have to nod and say, yeah, I mean, they are. The, the game is a lot bigger. The game is a lot more complex than when it was first released. It's no longer the same game um, as when it was first released. There's a lot more power creep that's come into the game. I think we all can recognize that. <laughs> Stat sticks just got nerfed because they're massive power creep. Um, so I think that's it's both a good thing and a bad thing. Um, from a design perspective, it's easy for us as players and as gamers to sit here and critique designers and go, oh, why is it that you're 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 enforcing archetypes that uh, I want to be able to to do my meme build. I want to be able to play a berserker that's a spellcaster based on energy shield, and I want to be a witch that uses melee strength build. Like you still can do that, but whether or not it's going to be optimal or not, that's different. So if you want to play something that's suboptimal or if you want to get really creative, there's lots of different builds that are on the forums that occasionally we try to showcase on this channel even that are just really wacky builds that are outside of the meta, but they work and they clear endgame content and they use really wacky, tacky concepts that you go, I never would have thought of that. That's what's so awesome about Path of Exile is that there are these different ways and these there are these different mechanics that can be taken advantage of and used and abused uh, to make these really, really awesome things. But from a design perspective, if you're saying, oh, well, why is it that we're getting more focused and more narrow in things? And why is it that the development team has to has to work off of archetypes? And why are we all being forced into this archetype thing? Because it's really tough to design without use without having something to go off of. Okay, it just is. Um, it's a lot easier to take something that already exists and critique it and tweak it. Like that's literally what we do as gamers, right? We take games that have already been designed <laughs> and we offer our criticisms, our critiques, um, our feedback on it. It's a lot easier to take something that already is and critique it or change it than it is to take something that doesn't exist at all and craft it together. It's, it kind of goes back to the old artist dilemma. Like is, is a piece of art finished when there's nothing left to add or when there's nothing left to take away, right? So if you want to say, hey, it's a lot easier to build things from the ground up with, with nothing else there, with no template, with nothing there, that's fine. That's what Path of Exile used to be, right? There was a limited framework, a limited um, uh, kind of uh, sculpture or um, palette, as it were, to work from. And that was your original six characters plus the passive tree. But designing and developing stuff at this point, new characters, new skills, new balance changes, um, as well as new content that comes out every single league. They pump out four leagues a year. My goodness. It, if other companies do that, they sell it as $60 as an expansion or as a new game. Like, this is awesome that they do this. And it's a lot easier on those tight timetables to design around um, an idea and a concept that already exists. So from a design perspective, it makes sense. And from... A gamers complaining and raging about a lack of freedom 
sense. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense that there's a little bit of tension here between game player and game designer um, that, that the player is going to feel and that we might feel, some of us that watch the channel might feel like we're being constricted a little bit or being forced um, to make decisions that are more optimal than others in a little bit. But again, I would just encourage you to take a look at the forums and to look at different builds uh, and to check out different content creators because people are always coming up with different um, different ways to abuse mechanics in Path of Exile that is awesome and it take down end game content. Um, it's really, really cool. So they play tested their stuff and they just told us, Bex just told us that they play tested stuff off of a hero font based caster for brands, the champion based melee character, um, as well as a dot cold based spell caster. That's what they tested all this stuff on. So the cold based caster has led to the new skill winter orb rework of Arctic breath and ice spear and adjustments to ice Nova and vortex. This caster archetype has led to a number of changes on items, the passive tree and the occultist tree in particular added cold damage over time multiplier and non ailment chaos damage over time multiplier is on new item modifiers on the passive tree and on the occultist. The values on various cold and chaos nodes were modified as well as the new brand skills. The archetype based on them has led to changes on the hero font and also had knock-on effects for totems. A number of totem nodes now also offer benefits for brands. The hero font node Ritual of Awakening no longer grants plus one to maximum number of summoned totems. Instead, it now causes skills that would summon a totem to summon two totems instead and grants 3% more damage per totem. Additional totems are now available from other sources, and players will have a number of options for totem builds as well as being able to explore the new brand skills. The champion now has a strong impale-based way to play and has had changes to support it. Tectonic Slam has now been adjusted for it, while Shattering Steel, Lancing Steel, War Banner, and Dread Banner have been added as new skills. Okay, so again, I want to applaud GGG on communicating all this stuff through the development manifesto. I think it's great. I want to again highlight that people are being very, very reactionary right now. So people that are going to be complaining about Hero Font, why is Hero Font going to be the, the, the brand ascendancy? Again, we just had this whole long discussion why it's easier to design things about, around that way. Um, there are plenty of builds out there that exist that don't necessarily play on the ascendancy that has stuff built for them. Um, that's just the reality of it. Uh, so there's lots of ways to play this game. Uh, you don't have to enjoy it. If you don't enjoy it and you don't enjoy the direction of the game is going, uh, you can certainly play other games out there. But um, as as always, just take a deep breath. <laughs> this is the development manifesto. This is giving us, the player base, insight into the minds of the developers as they're making decisions. Tomorrow we're going to get all the numbers, and so tomorrow is really the day to, you know, to wring your hands and to go, oh, why did they do this? Tomorrow is the day to do that. So if you've got gamer rage, save it for tomorrow. You know, sleep on it, whatever. Drink a Mountain Dew. <laughs> take a deep breath. We'll find out what the exact numbers are tomorrow. Okay, what about self-casting? This is the last thing. In the last days, the community has been very keen for news for casters who don't rely on totems or triggers, which is often referred to as self-casting. Self-casting has not been a specific focus of the set of balance changes for 3.5, and we don't want to try and rush in further big changes without extensive testing. Betrayal does include some changes for various things associated with self-casting. We have designed the new cold skills to be aimed at self-casters, for example. We are sure you'll find interesting builds and choices of many kinds in Betrayal. There are already some balance changes planned and underway for 3.6. We expect to keep a good eye on gameplay during Betrayal to see how our plans need adjustment and to develop a picture of the balance roadmap for the next year. Okay. So without complaining anymore... And with taking all of the rotationary realities of changes and balance changes and, and, and trying not to be too reactionary, okay, let's again applaud that Grinding Gear Games, not only do they release patch notes, they actually release essentially this, this, this um, uh, internal dialogue that they have as a company of, hey, this is what we were thinking while we were making these decisions. And then at the very end of it, they said, hey, you know what? We've actually pay attention to things like the forums and to Reddit and to Twitch and to YouTube. We actually watch and pay attention to all this stuff. And we hear that you guys are saying all of these different things. Um, and so really over the last couple of days, we a lot of people have been chatting about self-casting. And so they acknowledge that. They say, hey, look, we're not doing anything with it this patch because if we did do something with it this patch, it would be rushed and it would be unpolished and we don't want to do that. It wouldn't be up to up to your standards. Um, now, some of you out there are already going to be snarky and go, well, these changes that I'm reading about on the balance manifest, you know, these aren't changes I really like and they're not up to code. Oh, gosh. Okay, save your vitriol for tomorrow when patch notes get released and your favorite build gets nerfed. This is great communication. 
from an awesome company as they are literally telling us about the things that are coming down the pipeline and they're saying we're going to keep an eye on it we listen to your feedback and not only are they telling us that they listen to our feedback they're actually showing us hey we're thinking about this stuff for 3.6 and we're going to keep um watching betrayal to see what it is that we need to do to change in 3.6 that is amazing okay any other company on the planet any other gaming company on the planet, I challenge them to have the level of communication that Grinding Gear Games has because it is amazing. So those are the uh, Balance Manifesto notes from Bex as of today. We are three days, 14 hours, 39 minutes, and zero seconds away from betrayal. I'm excited for patch notes. The plan for us tomorrow for patch notes is uh, to put up a video of patch notes. We're going to go through the patch notes. Um, patch notes typically, just so that way everybody knows, most YouTube content creators and Twitch streamers put out like two to three hour videos on patch notes. We are not going to do a multi-hour video on patch notes. We'll give you some highlights and we'll do some rundowns on some things. Uh, but we are going to go over patch notes tomorrow. So if you want to know all of the particular details of the patch notes, we're going to link them. We're going to chat about the highlights of them, but we're not going to go through every single line of the patch notes uh, line by line like we do with other countdown videos. So just wanted to set expectations for you on that tomorrow. So all that being said, what are your thoughts on the changes, on the changes to stat sticks, on the thought process of how stat sticks are going to work? What are your thoughts on capping slowing effects? Are you somebody that uses curses like temporal chains as a defensive mechanism? What are your thoughts on the unique rebalances? What uniques have you used over the delve league and what uniques were you planning on using for betrayal that you're worried about or that you're hopeful for that maybe they're going to get buffed or changed in their drop rate um, and then what are your thoughts on design perspectives on archetype on how it is that ggg goes about designing and balancing things inside path of exile let us know down below in the comments if you've got any feedback on stat sticks, on the changes that are coming up, on the new skills, because as I've said before, and I'll say it again, we are three days, 14 hours, 37 minutes, and 35 seconds away from betrayal. Get hype, everybody. Save that vitriol for tomorrow. Goodness, patch notes. Whee!